All right, literacy leaders, in typical Melanthia fashion, this is a quick and dirty Facebook party training. So um, right now everyone's muted, and we're going to get going so we can wrap it up pretty quick. All right, so you have your Facebook party booked, and typically what I do then is I go in to my account to set up the e-show. So obviously you want to log in, which I already am. Log in to set up an e-show. You go to my account, come over here along the left, add event. So this autofills, start date and end date autofills, typically you shouldn't have to mess with that. And that is because when you then go in to combine the e-show in order pro as soon as you submit that party it will automatically close the shopping link so you don't have to worry about that the only time you would want to change this is if your party is staying open past this expiration date but usually you're wanting to close it within 48 hours so you don't really have to mess with it it also automatically um, fills in e-show, which is your typical Facebook party. The other option is an e-fair, and that is when you're providing a link, a shopping link for a book fair. So completely different thing for, face, for the sake of Facebook parties or even home parties where there's an additional shopping link, it's going to be e-show. So... You want to, this is for the hostess, and I'm kind of just going off of memory of someone I know. I don't necessarily know her email right now, so I'm just going to use my business email to autofill. Tax exempt, that is self-explanatory. It only applies to e-fares. Um, if you want your hostess to be able to see when orders come through, then you do want to put her email in there. If you don't and you put yours, you're probably going to get two emails every time. So that's just what that is for. And then you save it. And then it is going to, hold on, move that. It's going to add it in your event list right here. As you can see, there it is. So that is the link you're going to give your hostess. You're going to post that in the, the Facebook party. That's the only one you should be using, and that's the only one she should be sharing and guests should be using. If they don't, and they end up on just on your generic website, there is an option for them to look for, look for their hostess. When you go to shop, so you, you're gonna know that you, you're in the right e-show because it has your hostess name right there. I click out of that. There's no event. So people need to, you just need to post, show people where they should be looking. And if they say they're not seeing that, they can just go along on this, the left side of the screen. And you see it'll pull all of that up and you can just pull up whoever you want. And as an aside, I always have my own event going. So if I have a random person that wants to order, I'll give them that link. Um, and you can just keep that open, like we talked about, the, the extending of the party. Keep it open, and then when you have a decent chunk of sales under that e-show, you could turn it in when we have, like, you know, double free hostess rewards or something like that. Anyway, so that's the quick and dirty for that. Um, then you would go to... Oops. Let me try to find a good... Then you want to go to Facebook to set up your Facebook party. Oh, cute. Um, and that is just along, your, along the side here. You're going to go to events, and you want to create an event. So we're going to say Sarah's. All right, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I use Evernote to um, contain our script that we use, and that is because it's much easier to copy and paste from no matter where I am. Um, it's, so what I've done is taken the script 
in our from our Thrive Drive. Now mine is a little bit uh, chaotic in here, partially because I am constantly just tweaking details. But it will say right here, please join. Maybe I can do this. So for the description, right here. So we're gonna say. It's all the same. I just say live Facebook. Typically, I also have them do Facebook parties 8.30 their time. So I'm adjusting my time, but most of the time 830 works for works for them I also make the event private so it has to be you have to be um, invited to it um, in order for the hostess to invite she needs to um, she needs to RSVP okay so that's the basics so before so before I even invite her, there's a few things that I like to have taken care of first. And obviously the first one is the banner. Um, I also use Dropbox because that's another one that's just more mobile for me rather than having it all tied to my just my computer. Um, so I can just search images pretty quickly there. Um, yes, it is entirely possible to do these from your phone. I've done a few. Um, when we were coming back from a vacation, I did one. Um, it's not as convenient as being, you know, there at a laptop or whatever, but it is doable. Um, the mobility is awesome. So then I go back and I want to set up my welcome script. And this is, again, this is from the third script that is in our Thrive Drive, you guys. This one has a lot more information, including what you would be sending to your hostess. And it, I mean, it says right there, communication to host at about what point you would be doing this communication. So if anyone wants to join Evernote, um, it does have a free option. But if you join, I could share, we, we would then be able to share files. So this is something I could just share with you guys and it would drop in your Evernote and then you don't even need to, you don't even need to um, copy and paste that stuff. Um, so this is the host communication and everything. Whoops. Back up here. So here's just the hello welcome post where you tell a little bit about yourself. And you can either use your own image, uh, let's see, or you can just use a generic one. So since I'm talking about my kiddos, I'll put that in there. I uh, have to make sure that I adjust, I edit for the, <laughs> for the current hostess so I'm not naming someone else. Since I haven't invited her to the party yet, it's not necessarily going to pull her up as a person to tag. And there is that. So it's set up. And then when you want to, after you've had communication with her and she has her first, you know, 10 to 15 people who said yes, they want an invite, that is when you then make her a hostess. So I'm not going to do that yet because I haven't heard back from this particular hostess. But you would just go in here and look for her name. Where is it? Slocum. She's down there somewhere. Yeah. So you would click on her. It would highlight. Oh, here. We'll just do it for the sake of this. So she's in there. You push save. And wait patiently. And see, it has invited her. So she needs to RSVP, and she'll then be added up here where it says hosted by. 
once she does that, then she can just start clicking the invite button and adding her friends that have said yes. Only those who have said yes. Um, so that is the quick and dirty on that one. Another tip, once you have a series of parties already going, um, to make it a little faster, if you click on those three dots, you can say copy event. It is going to copy the description and everything. So you can then go in and change it and say, oh, I'm gonna make this Amy's party. And since I know I have one coming up, I'll just kind of go with this. Um, I can't remember, September 3rd, I think she is Mountain. So you can go in and edit these without having to repaste the repaste the description and everything, and it just pulls that up. The only other thing to note is it will invite anyone you're friends with from the previous party. So you do wanna go out and delete those people. And then again, it's private. Guests can invite, show guest list. That's all the same. I changed the the person's name, change the date in the description, and then you create it. It pops up. You will again have to add a banner, banner images, so on and so forth. Oops, I cancel. And you do have to repost, you welcome post, so on and so forth. Hold on, sweetie. I'm on a I'm on a conference call. I'll be out there in a minute, okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, so that, that's just one quicker, one way to be a little bit quicker when you're setting up, setting up these events. Um, blah, blah, blah. And since we're in here, so your party's all said and done. Oh, you know what? I'll go back. Um, let's see, who's someone I can look at? Oops. As your as orders come in, they're going to show processing right here. If I remember right, this is this is when they show up here. They include tax and shipping, so that's not necessarily your net. Double check me on that. Um, and then it'll show when they ship. Once they ship, it moves out of there. Here's an also the other one: unpaid orders not yet shipped. So right now I have two orders in there that have yet to ship. Once they do, it'll add to these totals. Um, you'll see here where it just has the list of how many orders for each person. When you click this little arrow, you can look at each person's order. So this is where you can go during the party if they come through. You can then go up and say, oh, Stephanie, thank you so much for your order. Oh my gosh, I love the great animal search and nature to color, just to personalize that post within the party a little bit more. Um, and that will also give you your host total right there. So this number right here, total retail, equates to what your hostess has earned in free books. So you would go to the monthly special and say, oh, okay, so between 150 and 200, they earn $20 in books or whatever it is. Um, so your party is all said and done, and you're ready to wrap it up. You're then going to go, oops, to your back office. You log in here. It's your. It's usually automatically set up as consultant ID and the last four digits of your social security number. If you've changed that, then obviously that needs to be adjusted. Log in. So when it logs in, the first screen you see is your dashboard. This is different from your back office. Your dashboard is just a really quick glimpse at a lot of different information. So one handy thing is it will tell you your net sales and commission for the month. I've done nothing this month but web Facebook parties, 
So this is my net sales. I don't have any outstanding, I'm sorry, net sales except for what hasn't yet um, processed through our warehouse and shipped out. As soon as orders process and are shipped out, that's when they will post new, um, new sales totals. And when, we, when you hear us talking about a flip at night, that's when our sales turn over and are updated. But again, it's only updated with anything that has actually shipped out by end of, end of business day, Tulsa time. So just be aware of that. Um, the flip happens Monday through Friday, um, usually Tulsa time. So I always say about 3 p.m. You want If you want something to at least make the day, you want it in by noon Pacific time is what I say. But sometimes if they're working overtime in the warehouse, they might get in. Um, this is... One of the things that will change when we get the new system, there are several phases, and eventually when a sale, when an order comes in, the, the idea is that the sale will post automatically once, once they have confirmation payment. So your sales and commission will be updating constantly throughout the day, which is so awesome. Um, and the other thing is that they're moving to is weekly payment so you're going to get paid more often which is also excellent anyway for anyone who's new this is actually a really cool site so right here it says our monthly um, home office challenge the HOC one two and this month we have three for anyone who's new and in their first three months this may actually show the write your own success story information um, but it's still, it's something you can click on. You can look and see where you're at. It's all maintained by home office. You can just go in there and check. Um, the Caribbean cruise or Mediterranean cruise, whatever it is, it's a trip tracker right there. When you get new recruits or any sort of home office messages, it will come in here. There are no longer as many links here because I've clicked on them, but there are some great initial training links that you guys should check out, listen to, watch, whatever the option is, here under your roadmap. This activity is something that you yourself maintain. Honestly, I don't really use that, so it's, it's moot. But if you have a set goal of how many calls you want to make and so on and so forth, that's where you can do it. Okay, to, so there's home, and then, and it tells you these little icons. It's your UBAM page. If you want to go straight to Order Pro or your shopping site or their consultant toolbox, um, or if you need to change anything in your dashboard profile, those are direct links. Another one that I often just click to get to my back office is the main Usborne logo. So this is probably going to look different for a lot of you, and that is because you can change everything around, and you do that by going to My Profile and everything is right here. It's just whatever order you put it in. So that's that. You can also add how, what it says on your um, website is all right here. This also tells you when your subscriptions for shopping site, Order Pro and everything um, expire. So you can just click Renew and do it that way. So and this is all stuff that, you know, poke around your website and check it out and it will, you're not going to break anything, um, but it's very helpful to just check things out. Anyway, so you're wrapping up the party and you now need to go input hostess rewards. So you're going to go to order pro. So here's a couple I have like Amanda's I just closed out. She recently joined us, um, but this was her non consultant party that she had. Um, so you'll go in and you'll create a new order and as it stands right now we have to take the hostess reward hostess order and input them so I'm just gonna make this easy on myself so I'm the hostess it's gonna autofill based on what shipping information you set here it's gonna it's gonna set what the tax is. I'm the consultant so I set it there if you're shipping it directly to your hostess, which you would normally be doing. Hold on, sweetie. I'll be out in a minute. Go ask to have that. Um, otherwise, you would, you would send it to the hostess. Okay. Which is me, one in the same. The next screen is just 
just the order type. And here I would just put my hostess and I've started putting Facebook so I know it was a Facebook party. Party date, really this is stuff you don't have to change if it's for a party. Direct sale is going away because it's not utilized. Book fair, same thing, it's a book fair. Um, when it's a book fair, you'll, you, this is where you would change it. This gives the hostess an extra $5 book credit. I always click it, it's just a something a little extra. Your next move would just be going in, getting ready to put in hostess rewards. Before you do that, sorry, you have got to combine that e-show, and it's going to list all the e-shows here. So you would look for that hostess. So I'll just use me, and mind you, my this has been open forever. So you'll see, okay, total resale sales that you get to work from. So the, the absolute minimum your hostess gets is merchandise allowance and half price books. And it's all configured right there. And you'll see how it changes as you add books. And it'll just have a running tally. I'm gonna delete this just so I don't forget to do it later. But So your free book allowance is there. Half price, you'll see it says, okay, you get $400 half price. So it will not change, even though you selected a book that's 13 bucks, it's still gonna say the total retail price, but it is, it is configuring the half price amount. So even though it doesn't show six dollars or six fifty or whatever it would be it's still configuring that but it's tracking how much left you have to choose and then the total that you've chosen so if you have really great hosts some of the other rewards that you can incorporate the bonus gift is the big one that is 35 percent off or i'm sorry 65 percent off um so they only pay 35 percent um, a really popular one that you can choose is the very first reading set. So you add that. And you'll see, you told the book that you selected, $69.99, total that it is charging is $24.50. I don't know why it shows you what the, it's charging on this one, but not on the other ones. It is what it is. Just know that the system is applying the correct discounts. So, a couple other, uh, let's see, the booking special, that is the $20 for $5. A lot of times I pay that $5 difference, but you can put any books in there. Um, it can be a couple books, it can be one book, whatever. Or if, you're, if you want to issue your hostess, you know, have her pay the $5, you can. That's what that one is. Hostess incentive is $25 worth of books and they only have to pay 35%. That's another one that can be any number of books in there as long as it's, you know. And if it goes over, it's just going to automatically add it to the amount owed at the end. So all of these discounts are described in a document in the Thrive Drive training. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's under if it's under the getting started or under Facebook's Facebook party specifically, but they are in there and they're listed. Um, so parties wrapped up, you've selected all your books. The other one that I know some people have gotten hung up on, if your hostess has gone over her, um, if she's gone over her merchandise allowance, just for whatever reason, actually, you know, let me show you specifically it's the best way to do this so the only time you would get additional commission where this would change your net sales and your commission would change is either your hostess orders full retail and um, customer specials those would still go toward net sales and provide commission or if in ordering um, the free books you went over by a certain amount. So let's say, let's say we just add 40 of those. 
So it says, okay, you went over by 7460. So up here, it's going to show you the net sales, which is 75% of this. The other 25% then becomes your commission. And it is going to then change total retail sales for what the hostess made. So that all shakes out. So when this happens, when you go over on that amount or if your hostess orders full retail books, when you're looking at payment in here, this total does not include the commission. So this is your host's total minus commission. So when you go to give your hostess her total, you need to take that amount and add back in the 1865 and once you have that total that's the number that you give to your hostess so you know roughly it's going to be $120 that she owes it is not just this 103 because as it says right here it's mine that total is minus your commission if you did not earn a commission because you didn't go over merchandise allowance or there were no extra um, full retail or customer specials ordered, then this will be zero and you don't have to worry about it. Then this will be the total. Um, I just want to stress that because we have had some people who accidentally missed that and they missed their commission. So, and we do not want that to happen. Anyway, once you have all this, um, you can either have your hostess PayPal you if, if you and she have a PayPal account or if she's fine calling you and giving her your credit card, her credit card, you would enter that information here, and it gives gives what you need. It's usually the amount, um, well, self-explanatory there. Um, if hostess, if your hostess PayPal's you, then you can just pay with your own credit card information. So you would put in your CV code. Usually, since I've already got this on file, which you can do under consultant and general setup. I then just have to add my CVV code, and then you come up here, oops, to final review. This, of course, isn't gonna work because you would click review order. It will pop up with a screen that says, you know, everything's fine, or it's gonna say, we need, we need credit card information because I didn't put it in there. So the final step would be a button that says submit. You'll click submit there, and then, um, it will say, you know, it's posted. Would you like to move this information to the, the expense ledger? Yes, you want to do that because you're tracking, you're just tracking um, costs of goods sold. You're tracking payments and everything for tax purposes, which is another discussion entirely. Um, however, if you do have some an, an accountant, it is nice to work with them. Um, I am not one, so I cannot give tax advice on this. But... Uh, yeah, so that is that in a nutshell. Let me see. I'm going to come back here. Oops. All right. I'm going to attempt to unmute people. Oops, hold on. What's the easiest way to explain that to a hostess without saying you're paying X toward my commission? Or if they want to see a breakdown of the total, how do you explain them paying the commission? I usually just give them the total. I've never had a hostess ask for a breakdown. If they want a breakdown, I guess you can give them, let me share. It's a god awful screen right now, but hold on. Right, oops, right here under print screen. if it works, is the full printout of, whoops, going to end, Ooh. is the full printout and explanation of all the charges that you input. Now, mine doesn't look very busy right now, obviously, because I haven't put a bunch in there, but it's all broken down there. But honestly, what I usually um, show people is I say, all right, your total is X amount. Without the hostess rewards, it would have been this amount. So you saved 
X percent. And then I also say as a consultant for this party, you would your commission would have been, you know, $150 or something like that. So um, that's usually how I break it down. But if they want to see complete breakdown, I guess you're welcome. If you really want to give that to them, it's just so many numbers. I wouldn't want to see that personally. It's kind of a nightmare. Um, but that's an option. Uh, but unless they ask for it, honestly, you don't have to tell them that there's no reason to say you're paying this portion for my commission, but it should be understood. If they know they're buying full retail, then there's commission in that. It's just, that's just part of the business. All right. Let me see if I can unmute people and then you don't have to do the. Since the commission is included in the full retail, there would be no need to mention it. Yes, Nicole, that's right. Since it's, yeah, that's a shorter way of putting it. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, since commission is included in the full retail, there is no need to mention it. So like I said, I would just say this is how much you owe, this is how much you saved, and as a consultant on this party, this would have been your commission. Most of the time, they're happy with that, so. Huh. Okay. I want to unmute people, but maybe I can't. All right, you guys, um, does anyone have any other questions? Okay. All right, thanks for, for joining us. I know it was really last minute, but I figured it might be helpful. Um, if you do have any other questions, I'll post this in our on our team page, um, and then if there are other questions that come up, you guys just add them in the comments. Oh, I see Becky's baby squirrel. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.